get started. My name is Sina Nejad and I have the privilege of being the chair of the planning and zoning and I welcome you along with my fellow commissioners. If you would call the roll please. Chairman Nejad. Here. Commissioner Beatty. Present. Commissioner Jabbar. Here. Present. Commissioner Javid. Here. Commissioner Linton. Here. Commissioner Macon. Here. Commissioner Noyola. Here. Commissioner Pate. Here. And Commissioner Carisi. Here. Great. As we all count our blessings every day in this great country of ours, uh, I hope that you guys have the people of Ukraine in your thoughts and prayers and donate to your favorite charity that could help them. Thank you. Uh, with that said, we have sent the uh, minutes of the last meeting. Uh, I would entertain a motion and or any suggestion for changes. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion and entertain that we approve the minutes for February 21, 2022. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? second? There is a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any in opposition? The ayes have it. We're going to start our first regular meeting. Uh, Mr. Boone. Good afternoon. Uh, the first and only item on the regular agenda item is PZ 2022-60, which is to consider a request for a preliminary plat approval of Faith Estates, Section 1, Beaumont, Jefferson County, Texas. Uh, the preliminary plat of Faith Estates was first approved in September of 2007 and was again approved in March of 2019. Uh, the two years uh, allowed for development of the subdivision has now passed and therefore Faust Engineering and Surveying has once again requested preliminary plat approval of Faith Estates Section 1. The development is located south of Plant Road and west of Helbig Road. The 9.72 acre development is a 40 lot residential uh, single family residential lot subdivision in an RS uh, zone. The proposed streets will have 60 foot of right of way uh, Grace Lane and pa Peace Street will have 38 feet of pavement widths and Favor Street will have 28 feet of pavement widths. Uh, Grace Lane and Favor Street will access Plant Road. Uh, water and sewer will be provided by extension of city utilities. And let me go ahead and show you the layout of the preliminary plat. And again, this was, uh, as mentioned, was approved back in 20. Uh, 2007 and and the way the code works is the preliminary plat um, are basically valid for uh, two years and if the uh, development doesn't commence um, then the plat expires and so it's it's come back to you before and now this is a third time um, so this is the overall master plan of the preliminary plat and if you look at the top it's uh, shaded in gray, that's the uh, section one. And this is a zoom in of the section one. You can see the, this is connecting to Plant Road uh, at the north. And so in review of the subdivision, uh, I should point out that section 26.03.004 of the city ordinances states that when plant when platting, sidewalks shall be installed prior to the final building inspections. If the lot is not developed within five years of the recordation of the final plat, the current property owner shall construct sidewalks. And so sidewalks will need to be shown on the plat, uh, and a note will need to be placed on the final plat stating that the sidewalk should be constructed, uh, shall be constructed rather, by the current property owner if not, uh, if the plot lots are not developed within the five years. So we would ask for that note on the plat. And furthermore, section 26.03.008-2 uh, of the city ordinances states that street lights shall be installed at all intersections and, in all, and at additional locations not less than 200 feet apart. Locations shall be designated so as to provide an average separation of approximately 250 feet. And several of the street lights shown on the preliminary plat uh, are shown less than 200 feet apart. Uh, I should point out also Grace Lane uh, will extend more than 150 feet beyond Faber Street um, and as such a temporary cul-de-sac would be required. And that if you look on your... Uh, so if you look here basically <coughs> to the... Uh,
the first street um, coming off of Plant Road. Um, again, because this is only a single unit, we will need to uh, have a temporary cul-de-sac there. And then finally, uh, section 26.03.01, section 2 states that land which the Planning Commission finds to be unsuitable for subdivision or development due to flooding, improper drainage, uh, shall not be subdivided or developed unless adequate uh, methods are formulated by the developer and approved by the Planning Commission that will solve the drainage problems created by the unsuitable land conditions. Due to the improper drainage at this site, Drainage District 6 is requiring that a temporary ditch will need to be constructed in a private drainage easement uh, which <coughs> delivers runoff to the DD6 ditch to the south. Uh, a storm drain tie-in permit will be required with DD6 at the outfall adhering to all DD6 requirements. Uh, in addition, water and sewer availability in this area may not be adequate to serve the entire conceptual faith estate subdivision. Uh, water utilities will require a water and sewer capacity analysis prior to acceptance of the subdivision. Uh, but based on that, uh, city staff is recommending approval of this uh, <coughs> preliminary subdivision subject to the following conditions. Number one, sidewalks must be shown. Uh, number two, adjust street lights to meet city ordinance requirements. And number three, temporary cul-de-sac must be installed at the end of Grace Lane. Uh, number four, a temporary ditch will need to be constructed in a private drainage easement uh, which delivers runoff to the DD6 ditch to the south. Uh, a storm drain tie-in permit will be required with DD6 at the outfall adhering to DD6 requirements. Number five, provide a water and sewer capacity analysis of the area showing they are sufficient uh, for the entire Faith Estates development. And then finally, fire hydrants required uh, at a maximum of 500 uh, feet uh, between hydrants. And with that, are there any questions of <coughs> staff? Uh, Mr. Boone, yes. with the in regard with the temporary ditch, uh, there are plans for additional lots where the temporary ditch is, right? Correct. What happens then? Because you can't uh, dispose of your water onto the next property. Right. So there is a, a ditch running parallel to the development here. And if you look, this is the overall master plan. And so what, what we're requesting is that a temporary ditch be provided uh, for the initial units. And then as the future units are developed, if you see, there is a uh, detention pond shown there, a triangular shape kind of to the southeast there. Uh, and so that would be the permanent detention facility. Well, how is the water going to get there if you have other lots constructed? Well, they would have to have a connected permitted outfall <coughs> to that ditch. And that's what they would have to work with DD6 to permit. I understand that, but if there are other residential lots built there, how are you going to get there? That's, that's my question. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to lead these people into going on and then all of a sudden they can't do anything else. That needs to be piped. And if it's going to be piped, it'd be under somebody else's property. Yeah, and I believe the applicant, the engineer, should be in the audience and they could probably better answer that. Great. Any other questions for Mr. Boone? Well, Mr. Faust, are you here? You're hiding, right? <coughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Richard Faust. I'm with Faust Engineering and Surveying. Our address is 5550 East Tex Freeway, Suite O, in the windy city of Beaumont, Texas, <laughs> uh, 77708. Um, your question again? Uh, Richard, on the top of that property, that's where your first section is, and then they're going to require a, uh, where is the north arrow on this drawing? Is north on the top, Richard? North is up. Okay. So on the south of your, your first uh, subdivision, they're asking for a temporary ditch. What's going to happen when the next subdivision is ready to be built? That temporary ditch will be piped, and we will start um, building the detention pond as needed 
in order to compensate for the drainage. Good. Um, um, I agree with that, but that temporary pipe is going to be under the road because it's not going to go under everybody else's property. No, right. sir. It'll line up with the road, okay. and we will place pipe in it as we further do a further development. So we are cutting the temporary ditch in the area where the pipe will be placed as we proceed with the development. So the inlets would be between the two properties, and then it's going to run all the way along the property and come down the streets, right? Which area are we speaking of? Uh, south of where you're constructing your first uh, <coughs> subdivision. Okay. Where the temporary ditch is shown. Yes. It's going to be a good sized pipe, right? Yes, sir. Okay. As long as everybody understands that. Any other questions for Mr. Uh, Faust? Yes, I have a question. Are you all planning to adhere to all of the conditions that are required? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Just out of curiosity, what's a good size pipe? <laughs> Richard, you're the civil guy. <laughs> yeah. Probably a 36 Ralph hand is what I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be expensive. Okay, great. You have, uh, you agreed to all the requirements and there's no public hearing required for this guy. So uh, thank you very much, Mr. Faust. Thank you. Great. We've heard from the, uh, the city of staff and also the applicant and he does understand the requirements of the city and he does understand the future pipe that needs to be there. Uh, and with that, I would entertain a motion. I have a motion to approve with six conditions. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any in opposition? The ayes have it. Thank you. This concludes our regular item agenda. And then uh, now we're going to go to the joint meeting with the Honorable Mayor leading us into the next one. Thank you. Mayor Mouton. Mayor Pro Tem Samuel, Present. Councilmember Feldshaw, Present. Councilmember Turner, absent, Councilmember Neal, Here. Councilmember Getz, Present. and Councilmember Durio. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the uh, regular meeting of the Planning Division and Government City Council. Today will be the only day that you will have the opportunity to review any item that is presented to you today. You will present it to the Planning Division within the next two weeks to vote on. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Mr. Boone, we're going to get started with the only case we have, PZ202264. Yes, sir. Item PZ202264 is to consider a request for a specific use permit to allow a middle school and high school in a GCMD general commercial multifamily dwelling district at 6490 Thielen Boulevard. Harmony Schools is requesting a specific use permit to allow a middle school and high school at this location. Plans are to build a 100,000 square foot building to house a new secondary school with 750 students and 100 staff. The campus is expected to function similar to a traditional public school in terms of hours of operation. Um, and let me go ahead and show you the slides. Um, you can see here this is um, the location outlined in red. Uh, the shopping center is to the bottom of the screen to the south towards Phelan. Um, in, under where it says GCMD, uh, that's where the, uh, well, I think the movie theater was there at one time, is now a church. Um, but this is the property in question. And this is the proposed site plan. Again, you can see the uh, new school there with the football soccer field to the north, um, the parking, and you can see there with the, uh, the circulation pattern proposed for, for cars, uh, especially notice to the 
right side of your screen or to the east, the uh, drop off and pick up um, aisles. And again, this is just an aerial view of the, o of the property in question. And this is a photograph of the subject property. A view to the east. A view to the southeast. And again, if you notice, this is um, assist to the southeast, but just to orient you in terms of the site, this is going to be on the east side of the shopping center looking south towards Phelan Boulevard. And this is a view within the shopping center looking, uh, actually looking north uh, from Phelan. Also looking northwest from Phelan. And this is a view to the south. Uh, so again, if you're in the shopping center, um, this is, I think there used to be a bar, local was there. There was, uh, this is kind of on that western side of that portion of the uh, shopping center. A view to the west. And so, in review of the application, um, and let me go ahead and put the site plan back up. Um, a couple comments we've received um, from engineering and traffic um, is a concern for traffic. And the comments are that um, due to the traffic generated uh, by the proposed uh, development. Uh, they're requesting a left turn bay. Median cut will need to be provided by the developer for eastbound traffic on Phelan Boulevard. In addition, uh, due to the uh, extent of the development, uh, there's a request for drainage calculations along with a traffic impact analysis. Uh, which will need to be provided along with a permit application demonstrating that the proposed development uh, would have no negative impact on the surrounding area. Uh, in addition, the submitted site plan appears to include, include drainage detention in the drainage district 6 easement. Uh, detention would not be allowed in that easement. Um, as part of the requirements of the city's uh, landscaping ordinance, uh, the proposed school will be adjacent to residentially zoned properties to the north, east, and west. Uh, although trees are shown along the north and west property lines, they do not meet uh, ordinance requirements per city ordinance. An 8-foot tall wood or masonry privacy fence and a 10-foot wide landscape buffer is required along any property lines abutting residential. Um, and the landscape buffer should have one Class A or two Class B trees for every 25 linear feet of property. Um, and for the council's benefit, we or commission's benefit, we did send out 74 notices to area property owners. We've received zero in favor. We've received two in opposition. Um, one is from a Vivian Gore address at 555 Parsons. Um, and they simply state they're opposed to the application. The second is a James Rhodes from 535 Parsons, which I believe is the street uh, to the east behind this development, to the east. And their comment is concerned about drainage and traffic congestion behind shopping center. Area does not seem large enough to support the amount of traffic. Also concerned about possible sports events and lighting. Um, however, based on the application in, in question, staff is recommending approval of this application subject to the following conditions. Number one, provide drainage calculations showing no negative impact. Adequate detention volume must be incorporated, which will maintain existing conditions of runoff. The drainage district six easement on the east side of the property may not be used for detention. And if you recall that uh, the photograph of the um, the oak trees lining the fence line, that's the uh, DD6 uh, easement. Uh, condition number two is provide a left turn bay median cut for the eastbound traffic on Phelan Boulevard. Number three, provide a traffic analysis, 
analysis showing no significant negative impact. And then finally, number four is provide landscaping to meet city ordinance requirements. But based on that, are there any questions of staff? Uh, the lighting was not your concern. One of, that was one of the complaints, right? Yes, sir. So that was one of the con concerns raised by a neighbor. Um, and we have in the past added a condition regarding, um, typically the condition is worded similar to um, providing directional lighting in order to minimize the negative impact on you know, surrounding uses, something to that effect. So that could be added as a condition. Chris, can you show the picture again of where this backs up to the neighborhood? Yes. So if you look, Phelan is just out of the frame to, this, to the bottom or the south there. And then you can see we had, as mentioned, two addresses on Parson Drive, which is to the east, uh, the yellow lots to the east. Sorry, the one I wanted to see was with the trees. Okay, th yeah. just the photograph of the trees? Right. Okay. You want to see? Okay, so here's the photograph okay. uh, right there. And you said that doesn't meet the requirements, those trees. So they'll have to have the additional, correct? Well, we won't, no, we won't require the trees to be cut down, okay. no, um, on this side. Now, on other, on other sides, there are some trees, but they're, they're not sufficient. But these, these would count towards the uh, tree buffer. Any other questions for Chris? Yes. Um, on, by this being a junior high and high school, will there be bus traffic for this? I would defer to the applicant. I don't believe so, but I would let them answer that. And again, there, I, th I think to your point, there's, there are still some questions about the traffic management, and that is why we're recommending the condition for the traffic study. Um, just so we can have an engineer look at it to see what is the impact going to be and is it going to be an issue. But I think the applicant could answer the question on the buses. Okay. And on, on that design that you had, there was a, a small strip that went out all the way to almost uh, Afton Street. Is that just parking or what was that the strip for on the this particular project? Oh, that's just part of the property? Um, and I think that's part of that DD6 easement. So I think it's originally related to drainage. But um, in terms of their proposed plan, I don't believe they're proposing to really use it. To use that, okay. I have a question about uh, is there going to be a band and noise when they have their football games and how will that affect the neighborhoods? And yeah, I would, I would ask the applicant that. But I would, you know, with it being a school, I would assume that would all be part of it, yes. Any other questions for Chris? Thank you. Uh, the applicant? Who's the applicant? Great. Good afternoon. Could you please uh, come up and state your name and address and also uh, any additional information you might have for us and address some of the comments that has been made? My name is Jeff Payne, and I'm the Outreach and Communications Director at the school that we currently have here in Beaumont. It's located on Calder Avenue, uh, Harmony Public School, Harmony Science Academy there, where we have a population of almost 600 students that we get on and off to that campus rather quickly in the morning and in the afternoon with no bus service. I'm not sure whether or not we're going to have bus service then or not, but I do want to just speak to in advocacy of the kind of campus that we are and what we provide and offer to the community, if that's okay. Forgive me, I, I forgot to mention you have three minutes and we'd okay. love to hear you. Okay, super. 
So you can see most of our information is, is on this uh, one uh, two-page sheet front and back that I've handed you. But I just want to say that uh, our school is really kind of the unsung educational hero of your city. Uh, we're a school that has appeared every year that I've been there the last 10 years on the U.S. News and World Report list of top high schools in America. And we have an amazing <coughs> success story working with the same student populations that all of the other schools in town work with. Uh, it, all of the lunches are now free, as you know, in the state of Texas. But if they weren't, we have a student population that would qualify for free or reduced lunch, probably up to 60% of our population at any one time. And we've had that for years and yet we have 100% of our kids accepted to college. Every one of our graduating seniors goes to college and all of our kids graduate. It's really an amazing success story. I was content to just be pastoring my church 10 years ago when I went to the school. I knew I had to be a part of what was going on there. And while I continue to pastor the church, my heart and soul was also part of the mission and ministry of this school because educationally what it provides for our community is unparalleled really. And uh, it's not just because, um, you know, we have some sort of a, a secret sauce that no one else has, but it's because we insist upon a, a culture that produces that kind of excellence and outcome. You can see among other things that 100 volunteer hours are given by all of our students before they can graduate. They give those hours their junior and senior years. And uh, they work in places all over this city and helping at the food bank. And as a matter of fact, we were awarded with the number one award from the Southeast Texas Food Bank last year uh, as the, the organization that gave the most uh, to that uh, organization and group. So our kids develop a heart and a passion for this city. And uh, a lot of them stay in this city and enter STEM fields and careers. And some of them go off and become doctors and lawyers and other important people in service to other communities. But a lot of them stay right here. And I think it's an important uh, thing for the council and the commission to know that this school is uh, doing a great work that they need to be supportive of, if at all possible. Thank you. All right, so let me. Uh, do you have any information on the lighting? Number one. No, and I number don't two, think the band and the noise. Anybody with you that can address that? Can you address a band or noise? I know I live near Sally Curtis, and. Uh, we hear it over on Carnation Drive when they're playing baseball. So I assume if you live near there, you might hear some noise. Uh, but we don't have, at this point in, in time, we don't have a marching band, and we're principally a STEM college preparatory academy. Good. And the lighting is something I'm sure somebody can address during the design process. That, that shouldn't be all that difficult. Any other questions for the gentleman? You guys are a neighbor of us on Calder, and I'll tell you, it's, it's a pleasure having having those kids over there. It's, thank you, it's sir. It's been very peaceful. So we have you. a peaceful campus by the grace of God. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, no other questions, right? I'd thank like to make a comment, Mr. Payne. I want to thank you for your contributions in your service and your work to you, uh, the great school of harmony as a retired uh, secondary schools and uh, university professor I uh, in, one of the things I enjoyed was going out to harmony and sitting down with those students and recruiting them into uh, Lamar University as well as LIT. Well you're still welcome to come back over and talk to them some more. We'd thank love you to so have much you. Thank you sir. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to open the floor for public comments. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak for or against this case? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. My name is David Bradley in my office here in Beaumont at 2165 North Street. I come to you and, and maybe a little infomercial on charter schools for those that may be a little curious about it. I served for 22 years in a position much like y'all, volunteering my time on the Texas State Board of Education. In 1985, the legislature 
authorized the issuance of charter schools. And George Bush was governor at the time. And in 1995, the first 15 charters were authorized by the State Board of Education. And then every year subsequent to that, additional charters were issued. Today, there are over 300 individual charter organizations operating in Texas. Harmony is one of the largest. They have over 20,000 students currently on almost 40 campuses across the state. You want to talk about school choice. We have public school choice with charters. School choice is limited. If you're willing to pay your property taxes and tuition, you have school choice. If you want to relocate your home, you have school choice. You can pick the community you want to live in. And sometimes it depends on which side of the railroad tracks you're going to live as to where your kid might go to school. But charter schools were born out of a need to provide school choice for families that were in communities either by loyalty or by economics had their kids zoned to possibly a failing school by virtue of their zip code. And charter schools have met that need. Charter schools are public schools. If you'll notice in the name, it's Harmony Public Schools. They're privately operated, but they're publicly funded by the state. Amazingly, they're pretty efficient. They're funded now only about 85 to 90 percent of what we spend in public education. And they even pay their own facility cost out of their operating budgets. They don't tax. They don't get bond money. So they're doing a great job. Um, Harmony has been about 20 years now, and I remember the first application that they brought to my committee. And there were five Turkish gentlemen there. And their accents was as thick as Turkish coffee. It was an interesting conversation, but it generated out of the need. They were graduate students at Texas A&M, one of the finest universities we have in Texas. But they saw a need in their kids and in their community of not getting the reading, writing, and arithmetic that would make them successful in higher education. And they opened up their first campus in, what was that, southwest Houston, and it was in a small vacated Jewish synagogue. And they even used the community center for their athletics. They had less than 200 students, and that was their humble beginning. And today, they're one of the premier public charter schools we have here in Texas. So we really appreciate an opportunity to expand the program here in Belmont. They're going to add another 100, 750 seats for parents that want to get their kids into a top quality education. So thank you very much for your attention, for your questions. and. It's going to be a good day for Belmont. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak for or against this case? Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon to you. My name is Sandra Nelson, and I've had the pleasure of working for Harmony. Your address, please. 4055 Calder. I've had the pleasure of working with Harmony Science Academy for 10 years, and I, my role there, I am the Dean of College Counseling. And just to reiterate some of the stuff that Mr. Payne actually said, uh, we in fact do have a 100% graduation rate and a 99% college acceptance rate. And this is every year that I've actually been there. So I can definitely attest to that. Um, one of the things that I do want to share with you is the fact that being a counselor comes with both uh, challenges as well as rewards, like any other job. But two weeks ago, I had the opportunity to uh, attend a ceremony at Lamar University or one of our alumni actually uh, was in his second year of uh, a pre-med major. And they recognized the young man for um, his great abilities and his skills and knowledge in order to go and to conduct research in Canada this summer. And the research is um, going to be an in-depth research on unknown proteins regarding autophagy, which is actually dealing with cancer cells. Um, great ceremony. I was extremely proud to be a part of it. And these are the students that we are producing. These are the, the things that we strive for. And uh, we prepare our students for excellence so they can thrive and go out in the world and make the difference. So I just want to convey to you all that Harmony is a great place. It's a great place to work and it's a great place to send your students. So uh, please, or your kids rather, not your students. So please uh, take into consideration that it will definitely bring a lot of um, great things to Beaumont, uh, the new campus, if you all see fit. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 
Young lady, good afternoon. If you would please state your name and address for the record, and we'll be happy to hear you. Hi, I'm Teresa Gore. I live at 535 Parson Drive. I was one of the people that submitted a vote against it. Um, I have several concerns about this. Number one being drainage. As you know, Beaumont's flooded multiple times from different tropical storms, hurricanes, and just regular heavy rainfall as we're going to get. I know that the drainage maps have not been updated yet, even though the NOAA Atlas 14 rainfall statistics were updated in 2018. I get that that's gonna take some time, but given that we've already had the north end of Parson Drive flood during Harvey, as well as I wanna say during Imelda, and we had people flood on Afton and Ivanhoe, I think it's a very valid concern that people wanna know if this is going to impact our drainage or not. And I know DD6 is doing the best they can to resolve that, but obviously it's going to take time because everywhere around Beaumont needs to have their drainage resolved. Um, something else I wanna to bring to your attention is the number of bars that they have in the shopping center. How is it going to work with middle school students and high school students getting out right when the bars and everything open up? Is there going to be some kind of security there? Are they gonna be instructed to stay out of like the bars, not harass them? What's, what's the plan for this? Because I know I spoke to a couple of the bar managers and they were a little concerned about that as well. I mean, back when Little World Rose opened up, there were issues with fighting in the parking lot and they had to hire um, off-duty security officers there. Uh, as far as I know, there hasn't really been much of an issue now, but who knows what's gonna be going forward. I don't know if they still hire off-duty police officers. Um, also, in terms of the traffic going through there, that area is also used by the deliveries as well as the garbage trucks that pick up the dumpsters that are behind the buildings. Those trucks run approximately 7 to 9 a.m. It's kind of a give and take as exactly what time it's going to be, but that would normally be, I would think, when people are dropping their kids off for school. At least whenever I was in school, it was like a, you know, 7, 38 a.m. start. So I would assume there's going to be quite a bit of traffic, and I'm wondering how that's going to work, having the garbage trucks trying to back up, pick up dumpsters, at the same time, there's all this traffic trying to go through. Um, my next point would be that the trees shown in the photograph where you guys, where it was facing, um, I wanna say south, most of those trees are not actually part of this property. That's actually part of the Colonnade Center. So that can't actually be counted towards their landscaping as far as I know. Um, let's see, oh, and the lighting. I had some concerns about that because we did have some issues with the lights from Little Woodrow uh, shining in my time bedroom is window. Over. Yeah, I would make a motion to give the lady another two minutes so she can Thank finish. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? A second. There is a motion. A second. All agree. Say aye. 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 And in opposition. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, so, like I was saying, the lighting has been an issue in the past uh, with Little Woodrow. They had some lighting on the back of the building that shown that was lighting right into my window. I sent some pictures to the owners, they resolved it, but you know, they did replace their lighting recently. That's um, the multi-light up in the sky one. I don't know exactly what the name is for it, but that is exceedingly bright. I'm not gonna complain though, because it keeps um, people from doing things we would rather them not do behind those buildings. So that's, that's nice. But um, the imagining there being stadium lighting or additional school lighting, I think that's probably gonna be a concern. And honestly, the only reason why I'm the only person up here versus anyone else on the street, a majority of the people that live on the north end of Parson Drive are renters. Also, a lot of the people that live on Ivanhoe and Afton are renters. So they probably have no idea because this has all gone to the property owner's mailbox. They probably have no clue what's going on. I know of at least five other people on the street that actually are uh, homeowners, but they all live on the south end. So the north end has no clue, none whatsoever. Um, let's see, oh, next question is exactly how are they gonna fit 750 cars if they have that many students down that little access point during, let's say three to four o'clock traffic on let's say a Friday when everybody is off from work. From what I understood talking to the bar um, managers, that's exactly when feeling starts backing up pretty heavily with all the traffic of people coming, um, wanting to go to the bars that are in that area, McKenzie's, the West, Little Woodrow's, Fast Eddie's, plus the new restaurants that have opened up there like JW's Patio. How exactly is that going to work? 
because what I'm foreseeing is a whole lot of traffic going down behind my back fence and there being so much traffic that people probably won't really be able to even get out of Peyton to even turn on to Phelan. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak for or against this case? Good afternoon, sir. Hello, I'm Mike Albanese. I, um, I live in Beaumont, 1850 Thomas Road. I own the retail project in front of this uh, proposed development. And I do understand the, the concerns. Obviously, this is something that we spent a lot of time on. And uh, really, as we got to know uh, the folks at Harmony and, and what their proposal was, and we've been talking about this for a long time, um, we would be you know, probably the most commercially affected by this. I understand the, the personal uh, concerns that the, um, uh, the lady just had. And so I would like to speak to some of that in the way in how we've worked through this. We do support the project. Uh, we support it 100%. We, uh, we, like I said, we spent a lot of time on this. We've talked to them about access, and uh, and I do think what the city is proposing is not unreasonable as far as drainage. Uh, obviously, that's something that we're all concerned about. Nobody wants, uh, and and I think um, we know the folks at DD6, and they do a great job. And I think I think what your proposal is there is makes a lot of sense. Um, as far as traffic, a traffic study, I think will give you a lot of those answers. We've done that. Uh, you're not really going to put 750 cars in there. I think there'll be a lot of drop off from what I understand, uh, with, especially with the middle school, the kids that aren't driving um, and, uh, and such. There will be some access. We are going to allow uh, access behind is the, what the, um, the conversation with us was behind the shopping center got to realize we've got quite a bit of room back there. The picture may or may not have shown it. You're welcome to come visit out there and we can show you or we can show you a survey. It's, it's about 81 feet from the, the fence to, the, uh, to our property. Uh, and there, there have been concerns. We've talked to our tenants and explained to them how we're going to allow access for their delivery trucks at all times and still have rows of traffic where they could go come and go um, to, to access uh, even so even if a, a delivery truck shows up you know at seven o'clock in the morning or 7 30 or eight o'clock whenever schools uh, uh, doing their part to or when, when when kids are going on their way to school uh, that we can we can accommodate uh, deliveries at that time and so we're very comfortable with that and the amount of room that we have and the ability that we have to do that uh, so drainage traffic uh, the uh, access uh, we're comfortable with taking deliveries uh, as far as uh, the lighting again I think we, we do enough of this development all over the country that I think d directional lighting hopefully would uh, would would help with that no one wants stadium lights shining in their their homes and we certainly understand that and and we've tried to be good neighbors we've not owned this shopping center um, for very long we've, uh, we've we've owned it uh, just for over a little over a year or whatever it's you know, I've lost track maybe it was the end of 2020 um, and we started the renovations and we're doing lots of work and we're trying to improve it um, we are not doing um, any new deals with uh, with bars you know I, and so I think that that's a good thing I understand that any anybody or restaurant that we do business that we Forgive allow me, Mr. Albany, is your yes. time is over so yes. I would make a motion to uh, give him another two minutes of time Second. Go ahead, please. Oh, thank you very much. So, what anything that we do will be restaurant slash. You know, they may they may serve alcohol, but it'll be restaurant, hopefully family friendly, those kinds of things. And so, we are working really hard, and we are working with um, uh, the Beaumont Police Department. We've met on site several times, and, and how important this is for us to make this uh, a safe shopping, eating environment. Uh, entertainment environment for um, for the people that that choose to come here and so that's very very important to us so I want to speak as the largest property owner right here in front of the property and uh, that we are in support of, of this moving forward thank you thank very you. much thank you anybody else that would like to speak for or against this case all right we had uh, some negative uh, 
uh, comments from uh, one of the neighbors. And if you would, please, uh, you have the opportunity to address that if you like, or uh, if not, we just add them to our conditions. So we'd be happy to hear you. Either one of you guys. You're fine. The negative impact was the, was the lighting and also the traffic is going to, traffic is already accounted for, drainage is already accounted for. Sound. And, I'm sorry? The sound. The sound. Sound. Traffic and sound. Uh, I'm not sure how you handle the, the sound, but uh, there are mm -hmm. going to be kids and they're going to make noise. As a matter of fact, they make all sorts of noise at my office, and, and I'll be honest with you, it's a pleasure listening to little kids playing. I mean, so, my, uh, <laughs> my counter argument on that would be there's a bar with an outside sound already, so I don't see it affecting it as much if they're not going to have a marching band. So that's one thing I would like to point uh, out. I believe the gentleman said they, they are a STEM school and they don't have a concentration on bands. So that, that doesn't, uh, probably would not come into the equation. Uh, we have the lighting, uh, Mr. Boone, and uh, you can just draft whatever you can on, on to make sure that the, the noise level would not be a uh, hindrance to the neighborhood. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I would just suggest that we, um, again, staff recommends a fifth condition that the lighting be designed such to minimize impact on surrounding residential properties. That's probably a normal thing that they do anyway. All right. So uh, we have uh, heard from the staff, we heard from the applicant and also some supporters and one of the neighbors. Uh, we added another condition to the, uh, to the documents. With that, I would entertain a motion. I have a motion to approve with five to seven conditions. Second. Uh, there is not seven conditions. It's just five. Just five. The five. There's five. Okay, with five conditions. We have a motion. Is there a second? Yes. And uh, all in favor say, oh, I'm sorry. Any, any discussion? All I'd, in favor I'd like say. To, uh, I'd like to kind of throw this out there, Chris, for consideration. I probably don't know what I'm talking about, but when the lady uh, talked about security, uh, th is that something that can be incorporated as a condition? of them to provide adequate security for <coughs> the safety of the children? So in the past, for some uses, typically there are bars, uh, drinking places. In the past, we have added conditions where they provide adequate security, but usually those have been related to, like I said, drinking places. So I would assume that the, the school is, you know, they're subject to state regulations in terms of operating a school and I'm sure they're interested in the protection of the you know their their students and, and staff and so I, 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 w I would hesitate to recommend as a condition because again at the end of the day staff has to uh, enforce that somehow so uh, I agree with Chris I, I'm sure Harmony has the best interest in protecting their own kids that's detrimental to their survival so uh, and I don't believe that we're going to have very many drunk kids going in the parking lot over there. So, Mr. With Chairman, that, yes, sir. I'd just like to uh, make a comment about uh, Harmony, and I'd like to applaud them for what they're doing with the uh, with the school and fostering education. But I also think that we will be able to, the city will be able to mitigate any any situation that may arise for the sake of again fostering education. Thank you, sir. Any other comments from anybody? I don't want to make a comment, you know, time to time uh, within my church and other uh, community members, they wanted to request and see if they can send their kids. But they have a, a wonderful system where it doesn't matter what your income is, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, and what your grades are, they give given everybody equal opportunity. And I tried to get a couple of kids in, I couldn't do it, even though I know the principal and know everybody, but what you guys do and giving everybody equal opportunity, we appreciate you all. Thank you, sir. We use a lottery system, and our waiting list is quite long. You know, I wanted to add about the band. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about the band. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about the band. I don't know if you guys have heard about the band. I don't know if you guys have heard about the band. I don't know if you guys have heard about the band. I don't know if you guys have heard about the band. I don't know if you guys have heard about the band. I don't know
Um, I know you, Jeff Payne, and I know your music background, and I hope y'all do one day have the music, and I know that that will be addressed if there is noise, but with your music background, I hope y'all do. Harmony. This was going very well before you started. I'm that. sorry. <laughs> we're, we're not having a band right now. <laughs> Anybody else wants to create problems? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 And in opposition, the ayes have it. Congratulations. Madam Mayor, thank you very much. Uh, we are done with our work, so you can send us home. <laughs>